Good Thursday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to what's making news, let's head outside and take a look outside our weather window from this afternoon. And we did have a lot of cloudiness and just some misty rain till about noon or so. And then some blue sky popped out for our afternoon. Still some low hanging clouds as we look down at the Wenatchee Valley, beautiful shot of the valley and the Columbia River. And as we make our way into the weekend, snow is in the forecast for the higher elevations. We have a couple of different storm systems moving through. One will be on Friday, one into Saturday and Sunday, and then the biggest will be early next week where we could see heavy amounts of snow in the mountains and heavy amounts of rain here in the valleys. We'll talk much more weather coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. An East Wenatchee man arrested for passing forged checks almost three years ago has been sentenced to drug rehab. Twice in the past two weeks, suspected drunken drivers have crashed into poles outside the Washington State Patrol building in Moses Lake. And a major section of Rock Island Road south of East Wenatchee will be closed next Monday through Wednesday. But first, our top story tonight. A Rock Island man was killed in a two-car accident late yesterday afternoon on State Route 28, five miles east of East Wenatchee. The Washington State Patrol reports that around 5.45 p.m., 34-year-old Sheldon P. Stubbs was driving a 1994 Ford Taurus eastbound on the highway when his car left the roadway on the right, overcorrected, and crossed the center line where it was struck on the passenger side by a 2015 Toyota Tacoma being driven westbound by 29-year-old Jose Rosas Valdivinos of Yakima. Tubbs was pronounced dead at the scene. Rosas Valdivinos was not hospitalized. The cause of the accident is under investigation. An East Wenatchee man arrested for passing forged checks almost three years ago has been sentenced to drug rehab. 59-year-old Frank Reyes Lara pleaded guilty in Douglas County Court in September to identity theft and forgery for at least $6,000 in false checks deposited in 2018. He was convicted last year of two similar crimes in Chelan County. Lara was placed on two years probation and mandatory treatment under the drug offender sentencing alternative. Without the DOSA sentence, he could have faced up to 20 months in jail for his crime. Well, twice in the past two weeks, suspected drunken drivers have crashed into poles outside the Washington State Patrol building on Pritchard Avenue in Moses Lake. Trooper John Bryant says road construction near the building has made travel challenging enough without adding alcohol into the mix. Hello everybody, Trooper Bryant here in Moses Lake at the Washington State Patrol Detachment. A couple issues we have in our parking lot. One, a flagpole that is bent. There's not a flag on it because it's bent. The second one, brand new PUD power pole in the corner. Why, you might ask. Both were struck by DUI drivers that came around this corner here on the corner of Pritchard and Laguna Avenue. One struck the power pole about 1.55 in the morning on October 29th. Another driver went through our parking lot and struck the flagpole on October 23rd, about 1.48 in the morning, about a similar time frame. Both drivers were arrested for DUI. We're so happy they didn't drive through the building. But the other thing I'd like to point out here is there's construction going on off of the exit here, 174, which is down there a ways. They're putting in a brand new truck stop. Well, they've made Pritchard Road a one way road. So if drivers come down, they hit this Jersey barrier. If they go to the left, they'll get right onto eastbound I-90. They go to the right of the concrete Jersey barrier, then they make a right turn and head down Laguna Drive they need to go someplace down there or make a turn and get back onto westbound I-90. So we need drivers to be aware and be careful of the situation here. We're just hoping to avoid any more problems. The DUIs themselves are a problem, but drivers need to be cautious in the area and pay attention to the sign and the location of the concrete Jersey barrier. So thanks for your cooperation, everybody. Be safe out there. A heads up for you now as we head to break, a major section of Rock Island Road south of East Wenatchee will be closed next Monday through Wednesday. Detours will be in place between 3rd Street Southeast and South Kentucky Avenue with some local access. 
The East Wenatchee Water District is connecting water service to three undeve under undeveloped lots in the area, and Douglas County says the large closure zone will allow better access for trucks. Well, coming up next, Luke Davies of the Chelan Douglas Health District talks childhood COVID vaccines with Representative Kim Schreier. Pop-up COVID-19 vaccination clinics for children ages 5 to 11 will open in Chelan County beginning as soon as Saturday, November 13th. The State Department of Public Health says it's detected 189 outbreaks of COVID-19 in K-12 schools since the school year began in August. And citing stresses of COVID-19, the superintendent of the Soap Lake School District announced yesterday that schools will be closed all of Thanksgiving week. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Are you a take charge kind of person? Consider a career as a health unit coordinator. You'll work to keep health facilities running efficiently by coordinating medical providers, patients, and departments. The Charter College Certificate in Health Unit Coordinator program can get you up to speed on basic patient care, health records management, health and safety procedures, and medical billing. And the 10-month online program includes a computer you keep. Get started at chartercollege.edu, where we work to get you to work. At Wenatchee Power Sports, we proudly offer the Polaris product line. Polaris builds the highest quality side-by-side -side in the industry with off-road capability that's second to none. The Polaris pre-order program allows customers to purchase the vehicle they want without having to select from limited dealer inventory. The Wenatchee Valley has year-round access to some of the best ORV trails in the Northwest. Start your adventure here at Wenatchee Power Sports. Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales, made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups, or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. Welcome back. In another news, with Pfizer's COVID vaccine approved for kids age 5 to 11, Congresswoman Kim Schreier convened a Zoom town hall yesterday about the future of youth vaccinations. She was joined by health professionals to answer questions from the public. One of her guests was Chelan Douglas Health District Administrator Luke Davies. And our final question comes from Wendy in Issaquah. What is our future with COVID? Will we be dealing with it into the foreseeable future? So, you know, the reality is yes, um, it will be with us in the foreseeable future. Um, you know, Spanish influenza happened in, you know, uh, 19 teens, 1914 to 1918 through early, and a version of it survived to kind of move through and become different versions of the Spanish flu. And we have these different things that come in over time and what they look like. Um, now the question is, how severe will that be as we move forward? And that we cannot say. Um, but having coronavirus vaccines, having the new technology that we do that's very exciting, um, we have more data now than we've ever had on any virus ever. Um, and our ability to create an intervention against it, our ability to address that issue and rapidly scale um, is is really impressive so while yes it is going to be here we as human beings are responding to it appropriately and we are going to have ways of, of handling this like we have done um, better than we could before again i would encourage you to uh to get your children vaccinated to make their lives as healthy and safe and normal as possible to keep them in school safely. And if you still have concerns, well, go talk to the people you have trusted with your children's health for the past five to 11 years, um, your, your pediatrician, your family doctor, and sit down and ask your questions and get their take. You know that they love your child uh, and that they only want what's best for, uh, for him or her and for your family. And, um, so I would encourage you to have those conversations if you're still concerned. 
Well, speaking of youth vaccinations, pop-up COVID-19 vaccination clinics for children ages 5 to 11 will open in Chelan County beginning as soon as Saturday, November 13th. The Federal Food and Drug Administration and Center for Disease Control gave emergency approval to the use of the Pfizer vaccine for that age range last week. The Chelan Douglas Health District said they will be working with Columbia Valley Community Health, Lake Chelan Health and Columbia Safety to open those clinics. The health district said the clinics will operate during after school hours and on weekends in Wenatchee and Chelan. Times and locations for the clinics have not yet been determined. The federal agency said a clinical trial involving 3,100 children ages 5 to 11 showed the vaccine to be more than 90% effective in preventing COVID-19 in children. Well, the State Department of Public Health says it's detected 189 outbreaks of COVID-19 in K through 12 schools since the school year began in August. That's a total of almost 1,300 individual cases. Seven of those outbreaks occurred in North Central Washington schools, including six in Grant County and one in Douglas County. Almost 90% of cases statewide were diagnosed in school children. The definition of an outbreak is three cases or a minimum of 10% of individuals in a school setting. The report does not include infections from the month of October, like the ones that sidelined the Wenatchee High School football team at the start and middle of its season. Saying students and staff need a break from the stresses of COVID-19, the superintendent of the Soap Lake School District announced yesterday that schools will be closed all of Thanksgiving week. Normally, school there is out for two and a half days for the Thanksgiving holiday. Superintendent Sunshine Prey said the decision to take the whole week off was not made quickly, but she said she watched students and staff. She saw a level of stress that she's never seen before. Prey said they anticipated school was normal this year, but quote, nothing is back to normal yet, unquote. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. What is home? A place to gather, a place to grow, provide shelter for the ones we love, eat, drink, restore, build trust. It's a place to rest when the work day is done. A place to find quiet after a night of good fun. What an honor we have at Guild to help own, finance, create, pave the way to live in home. Traditional values and innovation in honoring the life of each family we serve is part of the ministry of Heritage Memorial Chapel. Our staff is committed to walk with your family with compassion through this time of grief. We are here to help and here to serve. The right kind of help when you need it most. Heritage Memorial Chapel. At DA Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. DA Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at DA Davidson help chart your retirement future today. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Time now for our weekly Pause for Pets feature from the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Tonight, we're introduced to Smokey the Cat. This week on Pause for Pets, we meet Smokey, an older cat who's ready for a quiet home. Hi everyone, my name is Haley and I'm with the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society as an animal care tech. And here this week we have um, Smokey. Smokey is a 16 year old boy cat. And as you may be able to see, he has his ear tip removed. Um, we thought that he would be 
a little bit too feral to be adopted out, but as you can see, he's turned into a major love bug. Um, he does enjoy being on laps and being petted. Um, everything, though, is on his terms. He doesn't like being held and picked up, but if he walks onto your lap, he's more than happy to just hang out there and stay. Um, he does let you know when he's done wanting attention. And um, because of all this, he will need an adult-only home. Um, no kids, not even for visiting, just because of his particularities in how he wants to be handled. If you are interested in meeting and adopting Smokey, the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society is located at 1474 South Wenatchee Avenue and is open 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. and closed 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. for quiet hour. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at wenatchehumane.org. Time now to take a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope your Thursday was a great one. We started off with lots of clouds and some light rain showers this morning, and that gave way to just a little bit of blue sky. This is from about mid-afternoon today, looking down from our SkyFi tower camera at the beautiful Wenatchee Valley. And Boy, we had some fog, some low clouds, a little bit of everything out there today. But as actually, high temperatures really didn't get too bad. We were above normal today, 54 degrees, our unofficial high. 49 now is where we should be for a normal high temperature. Record high, 2014. Beautiful day, 66 degrees. We started off the morning at 44, so it was a mild start to our day. That's 10 degrees above where we should be for this time of year at 34. And our record low temperature was set back in 1973 at 17 degrees. We did pick up another tenth of an inch of moisture last night. That's now 21 hundredths in the last two days, and that finally gets us over four inches for the year at 4.06. Sunrise was at 749 this morning, and the sun will set at 539. Let's take a peek now at your Friday weather forecast, and at least the temperatures Friday, we will see once again a good chance for rain showers. Very active weather period happening right now in the Pacific Northwest. 54s for Moses Lake, Afreda, and Quincy. A little bit cooler back to the west and north. 53 in Wenatchee, 50 in Leavenworth, and a high temperature in Chelan tomorrow expected to reach around 51 degrees. Tonight, we can expect cloudy skies to begin with and then clearing skies overnight. It might be a little bit breezy overnight as well with low temperatures somewhere in the upper 30s. There's that weather maker that brought us the uh, rain today. As we get you into Friday. That system just slides to the north a little bit, and that'll bring us about a 60% chance of the wet stuff. Most of it will be along the mountains, but I think some of that will spill over for our Friday with high temperatures tomorrow, a lot like today into the lower 50s. As we get you into the upcoming weekend for Saturday, mostly cloudy skies. Yeah, a double shot of low pressure now, and that'll bring us about a 50% chance of rain on Saturday. It will cool off, too, as we go more to a north flow of air. High temperatures Saturday in the upper 40s. Sunday, not as great a chance of rain, although we could see that. Snow back in the Cascades, a definite possibility. High temperatures again, upper 40s for Sunday. Monday, our only dry day in the entire forecast. Partly cloudy skies. It will be a little chilly, though, with highs only in the mid to upper 40s. And then look out for this next storm system moving in on Tuesday night and into Wednesday. A 60% chance of rain Tuesday night with highs only in the mid 40s but look what happens late in the evening Tuesday here's our weather system and it will slide just off the Washington coast for Wednesday and we are gonna get wet an 80% chance of rain notice the red that is just heavy downpours of rain the yellow and greens also indicate heavy precipitation so we are talking probably 6 to 12 inches of snow in the mountains and possibly a half inch to an inch of rain right here in north central Washington. That'll be early next week. Let's take a look now at your seven-day forecast. 
38 the overnight low tonight, 53 tomorrow, about a 50 to 60 percent chance of rain both Friday and Saturday. That goes down to 40 percent on Sunday. Monday, a dry day and 47. And then we are going to get wet on both Tuesday and Wednesday with highs between 45 and 50. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Dr. Divis is proud to announce that Dr. Taylor Pedigo has joined the Wenatchee Dental Arts team. After much research, Dr. Pedigo chose Wenatchee Dental Arts as the place to practice and Wenatchee is the place to live. Dr. Pedigo is an honors graduate of the UCLA School of Dentistry and has made our valley his home. Wenatchee Dental Arts offers complete comprehensive dentistry from routine teeth cleaning to sedation dentistry. Wenatchee Dental Arts now offering two dentists to serve all your dental needs. Call for your appointment today. Saturday, December 4th, RLS Productions presents the West Coast Best Bon Jovi and Journey Tribute Bands at the Wenatchee Convention Center. Non Jovi will bring back the stadium rock of the 80s, and the Infinity Project celebrates Journey, one of rock and roll's greatest hit makers. Guests may enjoy an exquisite dinner before the concert or just the concert. Dinner and concert tickets are available at rlstickets.com. That's rlstickets.com. A new novel is now available at Amazon.com. The title, Lost Treasure of the China Bar, details life on the Columbia River and Plateau during the 1800s. You ask, is the treasure still buried somewhere near Shilin? Find out by reading Lost Treasure of the China Bar. Lost Treasure of the China Bar. Buy it on Amazon.com. $12.99 for paperback, $2.99 for Kindle. A great gift. And now, it's a sports update on the NCW Live channel. And a happy Thursday to you. The Seattle Kraken are back home at Climate Pledge Arena for an NHL matchup with the Buffalo Sabres tonight. Buffalo's off to a good start at 5-3-1. The Kraken coming off a 5-2 loss to Edmonton on Tuesday. They're 3-6-1 on the season. The puck will drop at 7 o'clock on Root Sports Northwest. When Angie Wild, meanwhile, are in Vernon tomorrow and Saturday in BCHL play. The Wild are still looking for their first win in six tries. And uh, the Vipers come in at 3-3-1-1. Face off at the Cal Tire Palace is at 7.30 both tonight, or make that tomorrow night and on Saturday night. You can listen for the action locally with Sean Zeers on the call on either 560 KPQ or 1340 The Zone. East Ball Wildcats football team's job tonight is very simple. Win at West Valley against the Rams in Marquette Stadium or face another road trip somewhere Saturday for a mini playoff with both West Valley and Sunnyside. Coach Michael Don says the task at hand is pretty straightforward. It's always good to control your own destiny. Um, win and we're in, and that's that's our goal for tonight. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's just it's a great place to be in. We've been in this position for you know pretty much every year for the last few years. We've been right up there top, and um, just another opportunity to advance. Senior free safety Apollo Mora says he and his teammates don't talk out loud about the playoffs, but they all know what's at stake. Yeah, we do. As soon as we uh lost to Moses Lake, we knew that we could not lose another game. We're already been in playoff mode. It's either win, you keep playing, lose, you go home. We've been struggling with that for the rest of the season. Eastmont has reeled off three straight wins, including a 36-8 defeat of Davis last Friday. Rams were leading at half at Moses Lake, but Don says injuries along the way really hurt their chances. They're up against Moses at half, 17-14, and honestly, they're thin. Um, they've got 22 guys suited up on their sideline. A um, couple big guys went down. They lost their starting running back, who also starts at corner. Um, they lost their starting D-end, who filled in for the starting running back as their backup running back. And that was all in the first half. So the starting running back goes down the first quarter. Um, the backup running back goes down in the second quarter. And both are two-way guys. And so, you know, they, I think they just got worn down a little bit by Moses Lake. And um, it wasn't like they just kind of ran away quickly in the second half. It was just slow, methodical, and then in the fourth quarter, the wheels just kind of came off, and uh, Moses Lake put 28 on him in the fourth quarter. Apollo Mora says Eastmont season has been fairly good considering all the injuries and adversity they've had to face. We've really struggled early on, and mostly throughout the seasons, with our injuries. 
but we had players underneath in our depth chart to come up and make big plays and help us continue throughout our season. Yeah, we're always just told you never know what happens. And whoever's up next, they just got to go out there and step up and play big for us. And so far, everyone has. A key injury Eastmont will try to overcome tonight is the loss of senior linebacker Logan Schneider. Don says they're throwing every idea at the wall and see what sticks. We're going to use all the bodies we have. Um, you know, we're, we, we had a guy who missed a little bit this week because he had to go home sick and you have to go through all this stuff like that protocol. But um, he's back, but we're, we're going to use some offensive linemen. Alex Dufour will play. Tony Ortega will play. Um, Swan will play. And, uh, you know, we're just going to try to get as many bodies out on the field that, you know, can run and, and keep us fresh and get after the quarterback and wear him down. Now, if Eastmont falls short tonight and Sunnyside beats Davis, a three-way mini playoff would take place Saturday at a yet-to-be-determined location. Don says he and his coaches will prepare for that if need be. Right, we haven't talked about it. We just kind of talked about the game. We're focused on this. Um, you know, as coaches, we talk about, okay, what are we going to do in case? And, you know, you always have your plans in place because you never know what's going to happen. But, um, you know, our goal and our plan is to go take care of business and um, hopefully get uh, a couple days off and start getting prepped for the playoffs. East Lawn and West Valley kick off at 7 o'clock tonight in the Yakima Valley. The other uh, game with a playoff implication tonight is at Zephyl Stadium, where the Davis Pirates host the Sunnyside Grizzlies. That's at 7 o'clock. We'll have Wenatchee and Moses Lake tomorrow night at 7 here on the NCW Live Channel. I'll kick off our pregame at 6.30 at Lee Bofto Field at the Apple Bowl. By the way, we also learned Wenatchee Athletic Director Jim Beeson tells us that Wenatchee's COVID scrub game earlier this season is against Davis will be made up next Thursday at 6 o'clock in Yakima. Here's a look at the uh, CWAC football schedule with Afreda hosting North Central while East Valley is at Pullman at 6. Sela hosts Prosser at 7. Ellensburg will play at Grandview tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. The Central Washington B League wraps up its regular season this weekend beginning tonight. Pateras hosts Liberty Bell at 7 o'clock. Brewster hosts Liberty Spangle tomorrow at 6 while Soap Lake travels to Bridgeport at 7. Okanagan hosts Northwest Christian Saturday while Manson is at Lind Ritzville at 1 o'clock. Waterville Mansfield hosts Enniet Saturday night at 6. We'll cross over games for 1A teams in District 6 and 7 start tomorrow night with OMAC hosting Newport. Cashmere is at Lakeside, Nine Mile Falls. Cascade hosts Freeman and Chelan's at Riverside. All these games are winner to state, loser out scenarios. Quincy finishes its season at home Saturday against Deer Park at 1 o'clock. Well, the District 6 4A girls soccer playoffs officially get underway tonight. Eastmont plays for the district championship at West Valley tonight. A game going on right now. Wenatchee is home to host Moses Lake in a must-win game. That starts at 7 o'clock. Liberty Bell hosts Brewster this afternoon for the third and fourth place game of the District 6 1B-2B tournament. Okanagan will face Tenasket in the Apple Bowl in Wenatchee Saturday for the district championship at 3 o'clock. Saturday will be the day for the crossover playoff games and soccer for the 1A schools in District 6 and 7. Cashmere will host Lakeside Nine Mile Falls at 1 o'clock o'clock in the winter to state game. Cascade will play at Freeman also at one o'clock. Well, the volleyball postseason continues tonight for the 1Bs. Wilson Creek plays at Pateras while Waterville Mansfield hosts Enniat. That tournament will shift to Waterville on Saturday. The 2B tournament resumes at Chelan High School today with Manson and Okanagan meeting for the district championship. Lake Roosevelt meets Brewster in a loser out game. Then at seven, it's the loser of the Manson-Okanagan match facing the winner of Brewster and Lake Roosevelt. Wenatchee High School is the location for the District 6 4 8 tournament on Saturday. We'll broadcast Wenatchee and Eastmont at noon for the district title. At the same time, in Wenatchee's small gym, Sunnyside will battle West Valley in a loser out game. Winner of that will face the loser of Wenatchee and Eastmont at 2 o'clock for Last Chance at State. NCW Life Channel will also broadcast that game. To be sure, so be sure and tune in. Finally, Chelan and Cashmere will play crossover games tonight uh, against Northeast A opponents. Actually, that's coming up on Saturday. Chelan will host Colville to get to state at 1 o'clock at Cashmere. Meanwhile, will face Lakeside Nine Mile Falls on the road at 1. <sighs> that's a lot to get through. That's sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And that is going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night.
news, weather, and sports. It's all here weekdays at 5, 6, and 10 on your local news source, the NCW Life Channel.